Okay, welcome to this episode of Love Summit. And in this episode, we are going to be replacing our stove. Right. This is going to be a big project, but we something we've been looking forward to doing for quite a long time. Yeah, if you've seen some of our other videos, you know we've had issues with the stove. It almost blew up, Cindy, what, once or twice? Probably once, and then the, uh, what was the... Uh, the metal, burner came loose. The, the thing underneath the yeah. oven came loose. So it's 20 years old. It's time for a new one. And Cindy loves cooking, yep. so we're going to get her a good one. Right, and we're going to go with stainless steel this time instead of the black, which should really change the whole look of the place. Right, so let's get into this episode. So one of the things that I like to do when designing some type of build is to kind of, if I can, bench test it before the installation. And so what we've got here is a big difference because the current stove does not have any power. It has no lights, no anything like that. So I had to figure out how to get power to the stove. So I've designed this little system and I'll run it through you here. And then we'll have Cindy test it out to see if it we're, works. We're testing this just to make sure the products work as well before we start disassembling stuff. Yes, as well as my design. I want to make sure right. that I've got it right. So. Right. So power will come from the battery, or the 12 volt system. That's the, the power here. Yes. You can see my data that I collect every yep. month for the battery. Yep. So it'll run up. And if. So we're using some kind of special Yes, this wire? is marine grade sheathed wiring. And um, we had this for the boat. And so this is uh, good stuff. I like the sheathed wiring because it makes for a neater installation and also makes it easier to feed the wires. We're gonna have to feed the wire as we see here. Right. So if you guys have seen some of my other videos, you know that I'm a huge fan of the Wegu uh, lever nuts. And in instead of the either the, the wire nut or just crimping them. These things are great, love them. So what's gonna happen is power will come from the Airstream to the oven vent with the three, and then with the other, the third wire will come on down to the stove where we have two Wago lever nut connectors. And so we're gonna go ahead and- Test this out to make sure that the stove and the fans work. Yeah, because it would totally be a bummer if everything got put in and then we found out something, something didn't, didn't work. work or I connected it backwards or something right. like that. So um, yeah, and this, hopefully this will be an easy install. It never is, but the fan that we chose, instead <laughs> of getting that nice Baraldi that everybody gets, um, this is, should be just a plug and play of our original. Right, this is almost identical to the one we have, except that it's stainless steel instead of black. Yes, and so the last thing we'll do is we'll let everything run for a whole bit. And then I'll take my infrared camera and do an infrared survey just to ensure that I don't have any hotspot connections. I know that for you electrical engineers, yes, it's super low current, 12 volt, and I'm not gonna find anything, but hey, I've got the camera, I've got the time, why not do it? So let's take a look at what they showed. We're gonna test this out and see if everything's working. Test out Rich's system to see if he wired right. it correctly. So if I turn this top one on, the blue lights on the handles should come on. Let's see if it does. Ooh, Ooh. It does. That's a good first start. And right. We're not releasing any smoke, which is good. Right. Sometimes that happens. So that turns it everything off. And when I turn the bottom one on, that should turn everything on like Christmas tree lights. Yep. That's the oven light and the handle lights as well. So you can sort of see that. So it looks like everything is functioning as it should. Excellent. Now leave those guys on when you turn the fans and the light there. Okay. So we're going to test the fan out sure everything's working on that one. Let's see, this one should be the light, which looks like it's working. Oh. And this one should be the fan. Mm. That is much less noise than my current fan. Yes, which resembles that of an F-14 being launched off of a carrier. So we're getting ready to take everything out. And just for old time sakes, I just wanted to test out my oven vent just to remind me of how it was. You can barely hear me talking over it, so uh, you can see how loud it is. So, but it did its job, I guess. And so did our oven, but I think it's time for a change. Okay, at this point, we're gonna remove all vestiges of liberal arts from our bodies. And we will be completely <laughs> technical from here on out right and hopefully we won't start cursing we'll see. all right let's grip it and rip it okay let's not rip it though 
So where are we at right now? Uh, an hour into this, we're finally getting the screws out, I think. Yep. They were, the back two were not bad, but It's just awkward. But the, these were a little tight. We basically had to manhandle it. Oh. I have the labeled. Got All it? Right. Ooh, dirty. And there we go. Wow. You got the wires attached, babe. Yep. Get these wires snipped. Get the stove out. Right. And I'll do have to do some cleaning, it looks like. What is this stuff? Oh, it's just rubber. Rubber. Oh, that's very interesting. Have to do some cleaning. Yep. All right. Let's do it to it. Yep. All right, so we're going to take a picture with my phone. Yeah, that's something, you know, with the phones these days being as they are, there's no reason not to take a picture. I mean, I know red to black, white to white, but we're just right, going to make we certain. Just, we just need to make sure we do it the right way. Okay. The thing that really sucks is I was hoping there'd be an access point to get the wires down to the stove, and doesn't it doesn't look like it's going to be that easy. We're going to have to figure that one out. I'll take two just in case, okay? All right. Always take photos. Yes. So we thought the best way to figure out how to take the oven out was to look at our installation guide for it and originally. Yep. We kept that. From 2002. Right. And so we kept that. So we're going to sort of do that in reverse order. Yeah. So there's uh, four screws that hold this guy in. And thankfully, one of them appears to have been a TFOA at some point in its <laughs> life. The thing fell off. So we're missing one screw. Okay. So there's one, two, three, four, and then five and six down there. Hmm. So we'll oh, have this... to see what the screws look like. I have a whole bag of TFOAs. TFOAs. So it may have been one that uh, turned up somewhere. Or it could be behind the stove. Oh, yeah. You never know what we're going to find. So so four, four screws and that's it? Yep. Really? Wow. Well, two, six. Oh, two down there, okay. four up here. All right, well, here we this go. This actually is coming out a lot easier than this overhead. Yeah, the overhead was paid. I have another cup for the oven. Okay. Screws. We got cups for all of our screws. Let me label that one. So this, this one is bent back. This one is bent top. This will be, I'll mark this one as O for oven. So we've disconnected the gas line and we confirmed yep. that there's only one that So as I pull everything. the oven out, you go ahead and feed out the gas line through that hole there. Okay. Here's gonna get out of the back. You want me to pull? Um, okay. Yeah, as I come out, just to make sure it feeds out like that. Yep, got it. Just holding it, yep, good. You're good. Woo! Put it down in the towel. Look at that. And there you have it. There's our yep. There's oven our space. Yep. Looks like it needs some cleaning. So what is our next step? No project is a project <laughs> until you go to Home Depot. Yep. So what are we it, going for? Well, it doesn't look like there's going to be an easy way. There's no way to get the, the wiring, wiring down. from the thing down to the oven for the oven lights and everything. So it looks like we're going to have to drill some holes in the aluminum and but there's two there's two layers there so it's not like we're going to go to the outside oh, right well in theory <laughs> um but yeah so and if you're going to put any wire through anything aluminum you need a grommet um i was hoping there'd just be a big hole back here but there's not so we're going to get that rubber grommet so that we're going to need at least two right one to go in and one exactly to go out. exactly even though we're using using sheathed wiring I still want to have that grommet there. So right, because it's to... a sharp edge. But look at look at these look at these holes for the stove over the twenty years. How they've kind of um, stripped, kind of stripped themselves out. The wood and... there. You almost need a molly now, huh? Well, hopefully the screws for the new stove will be in a different location than the old stove. And... You can see it's clean now. Um, the other the interesting thing is the gas connection went in on the right side for the old stove, and it's going to go into. The, left side on the new stove yeah. but it shouldn't be a problem it shouldn't be so hopefully the vent will fit into that hole right there that <laughs> could be interesting but i i think it will that's why we got the same model yeah uh, yeah otherwise we would have gotten one of those nice baraldis but... right we got the same 
model is what we had just in the stainless steel. So let's go to Home Depot. So did we find what we're looking for? We did. We found these grommets and it's an assortment, but they'll be useful. And so, there's two of each, so that's what yep. we need. Yep. So good. Let's go ahead and do it. And we'll see if we have to come back. We might. So we're now going to drill the hole for the top part of the wiring. Um, if there's one thing I hate doing is drilling into aluminum. Right. And you got safety glasses on. Yep. And we figured out that it would probably not be a wise thing to try to use an old hole. And we looked at the configuration of the oven vent and figured out where the hole should be so that it can actually feed. So we'll see what happens. This should be exciting. Just don't make the hole too low. <laughs> Just don't make the hole too deep. <laughs> that would be very bad. So what size drill bit are you using? Or are you just getting started? I'm just getting it started. It's important to wear safety glasses when doing this, for sure, right? Because I just saw a bunch of aluminum pieces yep. fly out. You're just getting bigger and bigger, right? Yep. Till you get to the size that we need. Which is what? Three quarters? Half inch. Half an inch. Is this the half an inch one? No. This... We're getting there. So what are we doing now? So yeah, there's a bunch of insulation. So what we're going to do is use my electrician's fish tape. And I'm going to feed it through the top, push it down. Cindy will use this little hook. <laughs> to try and grab it and then once we have it through then we'll reattach the wire and pull it back up okay well <laughs> this may be harder than it looks let's see is that the, oh good it fits in the hole now is it going to be easy to get it out of the hole that's the question i think we're better feeding it up okay i'm gonna try feeding it up all right we get out of the way All right, we got it. Five hours later, <laughs> almost we, five hours. Later. We finally fished our tape. We didn't record all that because another trip to Home Depot. Yes, for yeah. another uh, fish wire. Yeah, the one that we had was too stiff and it wouldn't get through the hole, so we fished it through. Oh, it took forever. Now's the time to bring our wire down. Oh, jeez, Louise. You can see there we've got our grommets that, in place. That'll protect the wire from scraping against the aluminum and maybe shredding or short circuiting. Right. Plus the grommet with the sheathed wire should be good. Yep. All right. We've cross-referenced our pictures and we're just kind of inserting things into the Wagyu connectors. <clears throat> because this will be the permanent installation, I will use electric tape around the Wagyu to make sure the levers never pop up, but they don't. <laughs> ended up putting it in one of the corner pieces that were already drilled the hole with because we could actually see it going into the hole. The problem was is there's an inch gap between the top and the screw hole so that unless you get it perfectly straight it's not going in so yeah. we, and then we drilled the other three holes. And even getting in those holes once we drilled them was a challenge as well. So we are tightening them up and we are very glad we are done with this. One of the good things about Airstreams is that everything must come in the front door. Try this with a residential fridge. So you can see the gas connection. So this is what Rich is going to attach. Yep, 
do that. So it's not that difficult. No. But we, we are going to be very careful in testing it, make sure there's no leaks. All right, that looks tight. All right, so the next is the electrical connection. He's already attached the, the Wagyu connectors to the stove, so all he has to do is just attach that to our line that we ran down the back of the wall. Yep. So you've connected power. Yes, and before I tape the uh, lever nuts down, we'll... Make sure everything's working. That's working. That's working. Yay! Everybody's working. Yep, the oven light's working as well. Yep, so that's all wired connect correctly as per our setup. So let's go ahead and tape these down, and then we're gonna test the gas. So we're gonna test the gas using two different methods. What is that you have in your hand? This is a... This is a Yuzo volatile gas detector. And so we haven't turned the gas on yet. We're just making sure that there is indeed nothing here that it could detect. Right now? Right now. And what would it do, that little funny alarm? Yep. It would do something like... Okay. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the gas. The first step is going to be, once we turn the gas on, is to use this. The second step will be our soapy water. Okay. Looking for bubbles after we light the gas pilot. So let's oh, go ahead and turn okay. on gas. All right. All right. We got gas. Your sniffer is smelling nothing, which is good. Do you want to try the soapy water? Yep. So we're going to throw the soapy water onto the connection. Go ahead and turn it off. All right. Okay, go ahead and light the stove again. Oh, okay. Let me go look for any bubbles. Bubble, bubble, no toil, no trouble. See anything? I kind of do. You do see something. So if you can see, you might have a few bubbles. So that just means it needs to be tightened? Yeah. Good thing to check. That's why you do that. Okay. So, so the gas is off. But because I unscrewed this with gas still in line, it, a little bit escaped. So you can kind of see how this thing works when you put it back under there. So it's detecting something. So it's detecting. But the gas is off right now. Right. Um, that's just residual from having unscrewed it and reseated the connection. So we're going to try our tests all over again. Yep. All right. As you can see, we're running. So we, we've got no gas bubbles, so we're good to go. All right, as a final test, we're just going to send the sniffer back there. Yep. And I don't think we are hearing anything. We're good to go. All right, we can ready. Now we're going to test all the other burners before we actually do our final thing to mount it. All right, sounds good. Well, there we have it. Yep. Our new stove has been replaced. Our ventilator has been replaced. Right. And what turned out to be an afternoon project turned into four trips to Home Depot. Right. Three days. And... Yeah, some unexpected Hurdles. twists twists and turns. We still have a trim piece to put in at the bottom. Right, for the spacer, and which shouldn't be a big deal. No, we'll figure something out there. That's the last part, but yep. that's how you replace a stove in an RV. Right. So if you like this video, give us a big thumbs up. And if you think we've earned a subscription, click the subscribe. And comment below if you've replaced your stove in your RV and how it went for you. Because we come out with RV and Airstream related videos just like this one every Tuesday. Thanks for watching.